Hi, my name is Daniel and welcome to the Crosslink channel. Did you ever consider buying a cheap 3D printer from China, especially this one maybe, the ANIT A8? If yes, you should watch this video because this is all about security, making this printer at least secure enough to use it in your house, coming up right now. Hey, welcome back. Uh, so you considered buying an ANIT A8 or ANIT A6 printer from China. Um, so I'm going to tell you in this video uh, a little bit about the modifications that I did to this printer to make it more secure um, so it doesn't burn down my house actually. Um, I read a lot about it in, on the internet, a few forums, um, Thingiverse, um, various places, YouTube, uh, what people do to actually make it at least a decently secure enough printer to use it for several hours. Um, although I wouldn't recommend anybody with any kind of 3D printer leaving it unattended, so I think this is something that you should never do. Uh, it doesn't matter how much your printer in the end has cost. Um, it, is a, it is a machine that produces a lot of heat and is dangerous. So let's go through the modifications and all the parts that you will need. The first change I did to the ANIT A8 was installing two so-called MOSFETs. A MOSFET is a digital switch that can handle, in our case, much more current than the ones on an ANIT board. So this mod has two advantages. First, it prevents your board from burning because of a short circuit or too much current, and it will save you money for buying a new board if a MOSFET fails. One MOSFET controls power for the heat bed, the other one is for the hot end. To mount it to the ANIT frame, there is a bracket available on Thingiverse that you may print to fix it to the side of the ANIT frame. The next mod is also about preventing fire on the ANIT board. It is a cover with a fan for cooling the board electronics. Even with the installed MOSFETs, the stepper drivers still produce heat and sometimes tend to fail because of that. So this is also a mod that can potentially save you money for a new board. Now let's talk a bit about the power supply. It is said that the default power supply that is shifted with the ANIT 8 can barely handle the amount of current needed for the printer. I think it's partially true, but it works. Uh, on the other hand, anything that is running on full load produces heat and should be cooled. So if you are not planning to buy a bigger power supply like me, you should cool it by printing this fan mount and using a normal 12 volt fan to cool it. When I first got my ANET A8, I was printing all the available mods and improvements. Especially, I liked the idea of having these nice cable chains for a cleaner look and cable routing. However, after a while I had the original cable burning through because the Y-axis cable chain seemed to have a bending radius that was too small and the cables also seemed to be too thin. So in the end I removed the Y-axis chain and went back to the original cable route from the back of the printer. Last but not least, I would recommend removing the heat bed connector. Then get some thicker cables and instead of buying just one plus and minus cable, really use all the connectors and solder two red and two black cables to the board, so the current gets distributed evenly between those cables. If any of the cables fails, you will still have another one as a backup. Additionally, I strongly recommend printing a cable holder for the heat bed to reduce the strain to the soldered cable ends. My first try was without the cable holder and after a bit of printing, one of the cables broke because of the constant movement, so I had to redo the soldering and print this holder to prevent this from happening again. Another aspect of interest should be surveillance of your print shops. If you cannot watch your printer all the time when it's doing its print shop, or you just don't want to have it near you because of the noise, you should have a camera mounted on your printer or pointing at your printer to be able to see anytime what's going on. I have used a cheap webcam I had and printed a holder for it. When using Octopi, you can use this kind of setup to create awesome time lapses of your prints to share with your friends. In another video I will show you how to set this up and how to control it remotely with the Octopi software. 
Remote surveillance is one part, but another one is remote control of the power supply. If anything goes wrong and I'm watching it remotely, the safest and quickest way to stop the print is switching off power. You can use any kind of remotely controllable power outlet switch to achieve this and in another video I will show you how to connect it to Octopi to be able to automatically shut down the printer when a job is done. You may also consider getting a smoke detector and mounting it above your printer. There is also models in combination with home automation systems that you may use to shut down the printer as soon as the smoke detector goes off. I'm currently investigating how to do this and may post another video about it soon. Yeah guys, so that's it about the physical and electronics modifications to the ANET printer. I hope it was uh, useful to watch. Um, I want to point out an additional thing about security and that is the firmware. Um, the firmware of the ANET printer when it comes um, from China, basically the default firmware is a very simple firmware that is like it works. Um, however, there is a so-called Marlin firmware project. Um, which is uh, giving you a much more advanced control about how the printer behaves, for example, uh, and one of, in this context of this video, the most important thing that it gives you is a thermal runaway protection. That means um, the printer watches the temperature of the hot end uh, while it tries to heat up the hot end. And if the temperature of the hot end doesn't come up, in a certain amount of time, that means um, probably that the temperature sensor somehow is defective. And so then it will shut down the heat up process. And so that's one important feature and it's also very recommended um, by the Octopi um, software. So the Octopi software will tell you once you connect your printer to uh, Octopi and you don't have the current firmware, uh, it will tell you um, all the time, yeah, please, please upgrade the firmware, it's not secure. And I think it's, it's absolutely right to do that. So however, the process of updating and compiling the firmware, downloading the firmware, and then um, patching it onto the board is not straightforward. I'd say for somebody who's never done that before, uh, he need, you need some instructions. It was the same for me. I, I had to look into several kinds of documentation to make that, to do that right. And so um, that's why I'm, I decided to, um, because that takes a few steps. It's not in this video, it's another video uh, just about firmware patching, uh, which I will do for you. Um, however, if you wanna look into the documentation, it's all in the description below. Uh, if you have any upfront questions, go ahead and ask them so we can discuss about that. Uh, and then in the, in the, let's say in the patching video, I'll go through the docs uh, step by step and explain how it's done. So that's about the firmware and I mean the software itself, um, the Marlin firmware gives you a lot of other control features um, that I will mention and also for example that what I've done on my printer is um, adding the automatic um, bed leveling sensor which is supported by the firmware and other things that you can con configure that might be useful for you. So that's it about making the ANET A8 printer more secure. Um, if you need any of the parts, um, the STL files, um, a list of parts that I've been using additionally, like the fans and, and the MOSFETs, it's all in the description below this video. And please use the comment section if you wanna uh, get any questions uh, to me, I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. I'm happy to do that anytime. And also, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you want, and hit the bell if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. So if you like, we'll see each other next week. Have a good time.